Alrighty, welcome to another four on four cube draft. I'm trying to size the cards a little bigger. We'll see if that if that looks good. Let me know what you think. I'm always trying for constant quality improvement. Uh, I'm gonna first pick Remand here. It's a pretty weak pack. You could take Remand. You could take Luminarch. You could take Tropic Island. These are all reasonable picks. I personally am gonna go with Remand. Probably follow it up with oh the One Ring. I was thinking of Mox Diamond, but the One Ring's pretty good. <laughs> You cast this, you get a free turn, you draw three cards, and then from then on you have enough cards to probably deal with their stuff to make up for the life loss and kind of go from there. So let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's really just Mox Diamond upheaval in the One Ring, and I think the One Ring is the best. Bum, bum, bum. I mean, Mox Diamond's close. Mox Diamond is really good too, but I like the One Ring. Don't get to play with it too often. We'll take that. It's... Me, um, oh, this is a pack, hold on. I'll, I'll go over to teams in a second. There's Balance, which is great. Underground Sea, which is obviously great. Tinker, which is great. And Underworld Breach is also great. Troll Ascetic's passing to me. He is no fool, so he's going to be aware that he passed Tinker and Breach. I kind of feel like I should just take Tinker here. I have man, so I have a blue card. Not that that's like the biggest stretch. And then Tinkering... For the one ring doesn't give you the protection, but can still be strong. And tinkering it away is pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with tinker. Part of it is it's harder to cut me off of a good tinker deck than it is to cut off breach. You just don't pass lion's eye or brain freeze and breach gets a lot worse. And I think those are both better than balance. Definitely better than underground sea. And I'll take tinker with some trepidation. Okay, Ponder's fantastic, so is Palantir. The thing is, Palantir might look like it works with Tinker, and it kind of, only kind of does. I don't want to Tinker for it, that's too weak, and I don't really want to Tinker it away. It's too good. So <laughs> it's kind of funny how that works. I think I'm still going to take Ponder. Ponder is just really good. And pass up on Palantir. Deep Cavern Bat has been really impressive. I just think Mesmeric Fiend was already good, and giving it Flying and Lifelink is awesome. But I'm going to take Ponder. Oh, wow. Now there's Preordain and Mystic Confluence. I guess I'll just take Mystic Confluence. I've got a nice mono blue deck brewing here. Pass up on Get Lost, Noble, and then of course that Preordain. I really do love Preordain, but Mystic Confluence is pretty messed up. So is Gitaxian Probe. I think I'll just take Probe, stay basically mono blue. Maybe I'll play Tinker, maybe not. Mind Slaver I found to just be okay. It can be good to Tinker for, but it's pretty expensive. Black Green Talisman is, of course, useful with Tinker, but I think Probe is so much of a better card that I'd rather just take that. Now there's Spell Pierce versus Volcanic Island. I like Volcanic a lot more than Zagoth Triumph. Zagoth Triumph is good, but it comes to play tapped, and blue-red is also a very appealing color combination. But Spell Pierce is also just excellent, and we are kind of mono-blue right now. Will I regret passing this Volcanic? Yeah. Maybe, but I'm going to take Spell Pierce. And I'll probably just take Brazen Borrower here over Spire Bluff Canal, kind of the same reasoning. It's funny. I, I would have taken Volcanic over Brazen Borrower, and I, and I would certainly take Spell Pierce over Spire Bluff. I think, of, like, if you had to power rank the four, it's like Spell Pierce followed by Volcanic, followed by Brazen, followed by <laughs> Spire Bluff. But uh, yeah, we'll take the Brazy B here. I mean, having seven blue cards and a one ring after pack, or the first eight picks, is something I'm pretty happy about. I mean, this deck is looking looking pretty saucy. We still haven't seen any of the big Tinker targets go by, which is nice, especially since I'm passing to uh, Masapo, the Mandrill Man, and he doesn't know that I took the, the Tinker, so he's not going to hesitate to pass me the Tinker targets in pack two. Troll Sedek, Matt, might already be cutting Tinker targets for me. I don't know. This pack's pretty bad. Masapa rarely plays White Weenie. I've drafted him a lot, so I'm going to pass the two white cards that I don't care about. I guess I'll take Imperial Recruiter. It's probably the most likely one I would play, and I don't care about passing any of these cards. I'm going to put the Recruiter right into the sideboard, though. That one's not looking too good. Yeah, Spell Pierce over Volcanic is a big, a big push. Or a big statement. I think I still take Fiery Islet here. I don't mind. Helm of Awakening is, again, barely a Tinker card. Like, it's just kind of a weird card. You want it in combo decks. It can be good, but a blue-red land is probably going to be better. And I don't mind passing a Rex Age. This pack came back. Oh, I kind of like Mentor with all these cheap cantrips. Like, Mentor Probe is good. Mentor with Spell Pierce Up is great. Or Mentor with Ponder. It is a shame passing a Seachrome Coast, but I think Mentor is going to be a pretty effective card here. 
Mentor, like turn five, mentor, probe you, and then remand your play is pretty sick. Um, guess I'll take the Dryad. I'm really not that likely to play any of these, and I don't think any of them are very good. So I passed up on Underworld Breach and never saw any of the other pieces. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be really annoyed if I open a Brain Freeze though. And then I have Tinker, but no cheap artifacts or expensive artifacts yet. But that's okay. We'll we'll, we'll find out. Oh, Third Path Iconoclast. That is a nice way to generate some artifacts. And this is looking like, oh, and that's an expensive artifact. All right, I'll take the Mind Slaver. I'm not 100% I'm going to play it yet, but we'll see. All right, what do we got here? So this pack has some interesting stuff. There's three blue fetches. It's kind of brutal to open all three. There's Triplicate Titan, which is a good thing to tinker for, but I, I'm not going to first pick that. Emrakul, not that interested in taking Emrakul here. I think I just take Scalding Tarn and then try to wheel Triplicate Titan. Let's see. Should be easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Um. Do I want Sensei's Divining Top? It is good. That that I don't mind tinkering away, and it's good with Mentor and Third Path Iconoclast. But Ragrin Triumph's already gone, unfortunately. Scalding Tarn is a blue red land when I have the Iconoclast already. I have a bunch of cantrips already. I'm just gonna take Scalding Tarn, I think. Okay, I guess I'll take Urza now. I do like Urza over White Blue Talisman, Caracas, Luris. These are all good cards. Urza is great though. So Urza to go with these, the token maker here. Not actually good with the Mentor, but I also might not even play Mentor, so who knows. I'll take Urza here. And again, I'm using the fact that Masapo going this way doesn't know that I've drafted a Tinker. Might not worry about passing the Urza though, of course. It's not a big stretch to assume that I often do draft uh, artifact decks. One thing to note in pack three, I can't really pass Lion's Eye Diamond or, or Brain Freeze, but Troll Ascetic's kind of in the same position because he passed me the Breach first. I would be surprised if he did pass me those late, but who knows? What's going to come back here? Is Talisman going to come back? That's the card I want. Oh, wow. So this pack has a Lelia and a Talisman, and I might just take Lelia here. At this point, the Mentor is looking a little less interesting. But I have Scalding Tarn and Fiery Islet, so I'm kind of happy with my mana fixing, even if I pass up on Volcanic. And it's so much better than Talisman, Flame Tongue, Rolling Earthquake. I'm passing a good green card back, but I don't mind that too much. Okay, this is a this is a pretty solid looking blue red deck. Oh, and there's Cryptic and Chrome Host Seed Shark. Passing a Dark Ritual and a Candelabra and an Animate Dead. Those are some strong cards. Um I kind of think I just want Cryptic here. It's a good way to bounce the ring. This deck's looking like a really good blue control deck. Chromo Seed Shark is good with Urza, but I already have Third Path Iconoclast kind of doing that. I, I think I just take Cryptic. Now, do I take Lotus Petal or Dak Faden? The other thing to, meant to note is that whoever took the Breach passed the Lotus Petal back. Lotus Petal is kind of like a, a bad Lion's Eye, but still a, kind of a Lion's Eye. I think I'll take Dak Faden. Dak Faden's pretty good. Pretty good against me, too. And this isn't really looking like a Lotus Petal deck so much. This pack has two really good black cards plus Inquisition, which can be good. Don't really like passing them, but I think I'm just going to take Mightstone, Weakstone. If I pick up like a Misha's Workshop, this card becomes a lot more interesting. It's a solid big artifact to play. It's good to tinker away. Can be okay to tinker four. I just don't think I'm going to play any of these other cards, and I don't really feel too confident in hate drafting any of them. Okay, Stern Scolding has really been impressive, but I don't know that I'm supposed to take it over something like Brainstorm or Hard Evidence. I'm not taking Worm Coil or Trike. Four, eight, nine, so there'll be one card when it comes back. I might get Trike last pick. It's not actually crazy. Which blue card do I want? I have a Fetch Land and I guess a Tinker as Shuffle Effects. Brainstorm can be good with Lelia as well, but I'm passing up on a Stern Scolding, though Sandy's on my team. I don't know how likely it is that we play against an aggro deck. I also like Brainstorm with Tinker. Being able to put your Tinker target back is pretty big. Uh, there's a Batter Skull, but I might just chart a course. Chart a course is pretty solid. I also don't mind missing on an Odawara. I, I, I mean, Odawara is fine. I just don't think it's that high of a pick. Okay, I don't think I'm playing Mentor at this point. Triplicate Titan did wheel. So did Top. I'm kind of surprised by that, but I think I still should just take the Titan. Titan is actually like pretty solid to tinker into, and I don't really have a strong reason to take top here. It's really good with Mystic Forge. Hmm. 
how much will I regret not having a top? Top is good with Urza and Third Path Iconoclast. It's actually really a strong card. And I'm kind of talking myself into taking Sensei's top. I think I'm going to. Hmm. I, I don't know. I picked up an Urza since the last time I saw the top. I picked up a uh, Third Path Iconoclast last pack. Ooh, Goblin Welder. That's a late Splinter Twin. There's Inspiring Vantage. I don't really think this looks like that much of a Goblin Welder deck, but I guess I have Charter Course and Dak Vaden to discard, and I have a Mind Slaver. All right, sure, I'll take it, and maybe I'll play it. All right, Red Black Talisman, definitely better than Haywire Might. We'll pass four green cards. I guess I'll take Candelabra now in case I hit... Oh, so this is tough, because I could take Candelabra in case I draw, in case I pick up a Talarian Academy, which obviously would be awesome. Or I could take Plateau and maybe play Monastery Mentor. I'm going to take Candelabra. Go broke. Ooh, Phyrexian Dragon Engine for Goblin Welder. I don't have a blue-red duel, so Oliphant isn't really fixing. And I think that the, the Dragon Engine could be good. I guess I'll take Concealed Courtyard here. Ooh, last pick, Hard Evidence. Okay, okay, I like that. All right, Talarian Academy. That's that's what I'm looking for here. Let's let's go. It, see, it seems like, you know, that's a, that's a reasonable thing to ask for. Um, so no Academy. There's a Lion's Eye Diamond, which unfortunately <laughs> is going the direction of the Breach player. Would LED be good in this deck? Not really. I mean, I might still take it. Subtlety looks like the card I guess I would take if it was just for me. The question is, how bad is it to pass LED to Masapo after passing an Underworld Breach, which I don't know how likely he is to have taken it, but he certainly could have. What does Lion's Eye do for me? I guess it's a zero mana artifact to trigger a third path Iconoclast or to spin with Urza. I can tinker it away. I can also use it to activate Mind Slaver. All right, I'll just take the LED. I just think passing it is too big of a risk, even if it, I don't know that the other team will have it. Plus, it is still going to be good in my deck. Okay, there's Mystic Forge, which goes with my Sensei's top, and I think I actually do take it now because there's nothing else for me. This pack is really thin. There's, oh, there's Bulls of Citadel. Tinker Citadel is pretty awesome. All right, I'm going to take that and try to wheel the Mystic Forge. But that that is a good Tinker target. You don't always win. It's nice to find something that will help you win, but one thing I have two things going for me that are really nice. If I Tinker Citadel, get, finding the one ring buys you that turn where you're almost assuredly going to win on the next turn, and then Cryptic Command can also kind of do the same. So I, have I don't have any Time Walk effects, but those are kind of close. Okay, and Citadel is also a good artifact to weld. I'm actually feeling pretty good about this Sensei's top over Triplicate Titan pick. We'll, we'll see how it turns out. Don't love that I'm second picking a card I could get like a seventh pick, but pretty decent chance I get Mystic Forge back here. Yeah, there's like enough playables here. All right, it could I could go for either another cheap counter, like a Mana Leak, Counterspell, Mana Drain, that sort of thing, though I'm not expecting to get one fourth, or some more cheap artifacts. Um... Uh, Wow, this pack is bad. I guess I just take Talisman of Dominance. It's pretty unfortunate, but another Talisman. Now I have two black Talismans, but that doesn't really even do much for me. It's that or Sacred Foundry to try to play this Mentor, but I, I just think I should just take the Talisman. That's fine. Oh, now there's Portal. I got to take Portal. Portal is just a busted Tinker target. Now I feel great about not um, taking the Triplicate Titan. I don't have a big creature to Tinker for, but if the board's clear, I can get Bolsa of Citadel. And if the board's full, I can get uh, the Portal to Phyrexia here. I don't love passing a Force Negation, but it, it's fine. The Portal's too important, especially since Matt, who's passing to me, knows he passed me Tinker. Probably this pack looks pretty good, couldn't afford to just hate a Portal, but especially since he might have thought I took the Breach anyway. But all that being said, I don't think he's going to let the Tinker come back around, especially one, two, three, four... I mean, it's a pretty good pack, but I'm, I'm not going to risk it. I do need Luca to come back here uh, before. All right, there we go. All right, Portal to Phyrexia. Lock that one up. And I need to get to cut some cards here. I've got a lot of playables. There. I mean, right now the Candelabra's not doing anything, though I, I deserve a Tolarian Academy, honestly. Wow, past the whole Kiki combo here. I could Show and Tell. Show and Tell Portal's good. Show and Tell Citadel's good. That both seems fine. It's that or Narset, but I don't have any draw sevens. Like, Narset is a good card because it's a good card, but I really do like show and tell in this sort of deck. I'm not sure about the Welder Frexian Dragon Engine sort of deal, but we'll see. 
Prismari command, Crucible of Worlds, Sir Ginger. I guess I just take Prismari command, and we are certainly not getting to learn Academy at this point. What a shame. There's also Ketria Trium that makes Scalding Tarn a blue red, which it already is, but it, we can get both. Uh, I like Prismari Command a lot, though. I actually think the Welder's going to be good enough here. I have Dak Vade and Prismari Command. I have a bunch of discard cards. We're almost mono blue. We could take High Tide to go with uh, Candelabra. And let's see. One, two, three, four. Oh, uh, I guess I'm going to get a last pick. Mind Desire, not a turnabout. I could also just take Treachery because Treachery's a fine card. I guess my biggest problem with High Tide is I don't have any draw sevens. So what am I like High Tiding into? Let's just take the Treachery here. Oh, Battle Ball. Battle Ball seems fine. Oh, I could take Salvagers. So Salvagers with Lion's Eye Diamonds, infinite mana, but you have to discard your hand. Unfortunately, I don't really have a way to win from there. I have Urza. If I have Urza in play, I can spin my deck infinite times and win. Or if I have like a one ring out or a Citadel out, I guess I can make infinite mana, then draw off those. Or Sensei's Divining Top. I guess Top is kind of interesting. I think I'll just take the Battle Sphere and just not Splash White. Subtlety Wield, so I didn't really even lose anything by <laughs> taking that. I think I like Subtlety more than uh, Karn there. Oh, and Mystic Forge did come back. I like that too. Now, I guess, what am I hating from Masapu here? I guess Nurturing Peatland? Sure, I don't know. Now I'm definitely hating the Pestermite. I'll pass a Manglehorn, which is good against me. Oh, now I take Kiki. I guess I could just play Kiki Pestermite, maybe. Sure, and I guess I'll take Oracle here. Uh, would I play Kiki Pestermite? Hmm. Yep, and I got a last pick, Binds Desire. <laughs> All right. Well, I've got some cuts to make, but I, I kind of like the way this this has turned up. This is like an actual welder deck. Let's see if uh, if I can manage to not cut the Goblin Welder. I know I'm going to be tempted to. All right. Blue Red Welder. And we have Tinker for some good stuff. Part of the problem, and look, I'm not saying I'm going to cut the Welder. I kind of want to play it. But the part of the problem is I need to cut a million cards here. And cut like I can't cut Mindslaver because if I cut Mindslaver, then the Welder gets a lot worse too. Mm, okay, we can sideboard the Treachery. Oh, I have Imperial Recruiter too. Let me see, let me see. So I guess I could justify cutting Brazen Borrower. I don't really want to cut most of these things. Let's see, this is currently, this is 10 lands. Which means I need to cut like seven cards. I'm going to cut the Welder, aren't I? Because <laughs> all my weakest cards are the cards that would go with Goblin Welder. Um... Yeah, it's just like this deck has a lot of combos going on. Maybe I'll side in weld. Look, maybe I'll side in the welder if they don't have a good removal. That's it. That's what I'll I'll do. Because right now, I mean, this deck's looking uh, pretty pretty great. Like I've got I might still a weeks I'm not sure about yet, but I've got two big tinker targets. I also have Mystic Forge Sensei's Top to draw my deck. Bolus of Citadel Sensei's Top to draw my deck. Show and Tell to put in Citadel or Portal. I mean, and then I have Spell Pierce, Remand, Subtlety, Cryptic Command, Mystic Confluence. Pretty good amount of uh, disruption with Lelia, Dak, Prismari Command, and Third Path as like my good red cards. With blue black and red black talismans and two blue red lands, so my man is not even that bad. I have all these blue red combo cards in the sideboard. I could also potentially cut chart of course. I think the hard evidence is actually good enough. Let's see. So I probably want like five mountains because that leaves me eight red sources, and then I guess I could I could play sixteen land with probe, brainstorm, hard evidence, ponder, sensei's top. That doesn't sound crazy. I still have to cut a card, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven blue, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine red. Uh, that's I should go twelve blue and eight red. I just my blue gets me my other colors pretty pretty frequently. Eleven plus the talisman. Okay, 
And I need to cut one card from here. It might just have to be Might Stone and Weak Stone. So the Mystic Forge isn't playing a lot of cards off the top of my deck. But once I get the top with it, it, it goes pretty nuts. Otherwise, I could. I don't want to cut either Talisman. Because right now I've got Hard Evidence, Sensei's Top, two Talismans, Third Path Iconoclast as cheap Tinker uh, cards. There's also, I guess, Prismari Command. I could cut Charter Course. But I might just cut Might Stone and Weak Stone. It's just kind of expensive. It feels like I've got some good heavy hitters. I don't really have a way to make it cheaper. Like, I don't. I didn't get Academy, you know, anything like that. All right, I think this is what I'm going to roll with. Um, I guess I'll put some planes in my sideboard in case I need a mentor, which I won't. And a lot of possibilities here, but this is a pretty streamlined version of the deck, so I, I kind of like where we landed. All right, time for round one. I ended up, at the end of the day, I ended up cutting Charter Course for Mere Battlesphere. It's close, but I think I wanted one more way to finish the game. Take a look at uh, my teammates' decks. Guess what? It's Sandy Dog drafting Red White with Parallax Wave, Othari, Fiery Confluence, Mox Ruby, really good Red White fixing. This deck looks great, Mana Vault 2. And here's Mac the Knife with a sick black red deck with Mox Jet, Raghavan, Inquisition Duress. That's nice. Snuff Out, Grief, Fury, all the free spells. Big Chandra, Glorybringer, Grave Titan. Yeah, this deck looks awesome. Fire Covenant, Fable the Mirror Breaker. Really good stuff. And then, surprisingly enough, Ely Cassis also on aggro with Mox Diamond, Chrome Mox, powering a white weenie deck, splashing blue. Has Palace Jailer, Seasoned Engineer. A bunch of the good white three drops, Days, Balance, which is actually really cute with Lotus Field, Chrome Mox, and Mox Diamond. So a very aggressive team here. Let's see how we do here. I am on the play against a Luris deck, and this looks like a keepable hand. I'm going to lead with Island Ponder because I'm going to fetch on turn two. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess this is fine. I will I will lock in two lands, because if I ponder and shuffle and then don't draw lands, I'm just going to feel really dumb. Botanical Sanctum. Interesting. That's not a normal uh, Luris play. Let's just get an island here and play Blue Talisman. Pass the turn. And now I can slam Urza or the One Ring here. We'll see. Unless my Talisman's getting blown up, which it very well might. Yeah, Wither Bloom was the card I was worried about. Milled Mana Crypt, Hex Drinker, and gets a land back. Okay, well, let's just pass then. I get to Spell Pierce this turn if there's something to Spell Pierce. Otherwise, I'll just play Urza. What is this? Oh, we're getting Lurus into hand. Sure, that's fine. I, I think I'm going to play Urza first because I get to keep up Spell Pierce. And then next turn I get to have one ring with Spell Pierce up, which will be nice. Especially since there's a decent chance I think what Matt's going to do here is go Luris, replay Mana Crypt. And then um, I'm going to Spell Pierce the Mana Crypt and hopefully stop a spell for the turn. Oh, this looks like a Toxic Deluge. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. Well, we'll just Spell Pierce that one. No big deal. And then... I could leave up Cryptic, but I think I'm just going to slam one ring here because I want to draw some cards. Pro everything, draw a card. Okay, <laughs> I guess I'll just draw <laughs> Mere Battlesphere into Bulls to Citadel and miss a land drop this turn. I don't love that. So you do get to play Luris and if you want, play Mana Crypt or Hex Drinker. But next turn, I'm going to get to draw a bunch of cards, and then I'm going to have Cryptic Command up, which is going to be pretty nice, though. My hand is like somehow really terrible for just the last two draw steps being <laughs> Bolsa Citadel Battle Bar. Not great. My Tinker now is, is pretty bad. But we'll see what uh, transpires here. I kind of feel like my Urza is on borrowed time here, but I think that's okay. Show and Tell would not be terrible. All right, there goes Luris. Here comes Mana Crypt. I mean, I'd be pretty surprised if it was Hex Drinker as the play. Obviously, Mana Crypt can be a little risky, but if you have a good thing to play... Oh, wow. So you don't have a way to use the Mana Crypt mana. Are we just pumping Hex Drinker here? That would be... Oh, we're ousting the token. Okay. No, yeah, that's fine. I'll lose a life. Draw. Draw. All right. Now, now we're kind of cooking. Um... 
talisman. Target deals two damage to any target, Lurus. And I think I still haven't drawn a land here. I could draw two, discard two. I think that's probably better. Two damage to Lurus, and I'll draw two, discard two. Actually, hold on. I think I should just play the top first and then do it this way. Mm -hmm. Two damage, draw two, discard two. And then, wow, still no lands. Okay, uh, I guess I'll discard Bolus the Citadel and probably hard evidence here. I don't think I want to discard the Battle Ball. And I'll, I'll pass. If you want to attack with Hex Drinker, you have to send spend some mana on it. <laughs> I didn't expect missing a land drop for two turns in a row after having the One Ring up and using Prismari Command. Not that the game's going badly. I still think I'm actually doing great here. Oh, Matt, ha Mac, Matt has a tutor of some kind. Yeah, here's Mystical. But obviously, like, would have been nice to play a land. I've got a nine drop in my hand, which I'm actually, like, surprisingly close to casting. But still, land would be good. If Urza dies, my mana situation gets a lot worse. What's the best you could get here? Like a Fractured Identity or something? I guess if you have a sixth land... You go fractured land, fractured identity, the one ring, leaving me with Urza, and then I can still do a bunch of stuff. I guess you could fracture identity the Urza as well, but then I'm drawing a million cards off one ring. At some point, I'm going to draw show and tell. It's going to be pretty good. I also haven't used Brainstorm yet, so Brainstorm is a good way to, to turn Tinker back live. It's part of the reason I prioritize Brainstorm is getting to Brainstorm your you know portal or mirror battle sphere back after drawing them when you have Tinker is pretty strong. All right, well, Matt is very good, my opponent. So the fact that he's cast Mystical Tutor and now spent like a minute or two looking means that he's, he's a bit st stimmy. There's like, there's just not much to uh, to get, uh, is my assumption. Or really it means that all the, the, that the choices are very similar, but usually it's a good sign for you if your opponent's agonizing about a choice. I don't know if he's literally agonizing, but he's taking a long enough time that I kind of feel like this is going all right. We'll see. I have a hard time imagining I'm going to untap with Urza and One Ring. Let's just say that. I don't know what he's going to get, but it seems hard to imagine that he's not going to kill one of these two permanents. And I think I can win the game even if one of them dies. If both of them die, then that might be a little tougher, but it wouldn't be over yet. I don't know what could kill both very easily. Certainly if there was something, I feel like uh, the troll ascetic over here would be inclined to to go grab that thing there's also hex drinker here which maybe you go hard trying to level up but that doesn't seem like a very fruitful path to victory at this point you can make it a 4-4 this turn attack for four i go to 17 then i go to 15 off the ring that's not very close all right what you got this is a pretty nice little luris deck you don't usually see that much green in luris but this looks like it's working out nicely wither bloom command killing my signet or talisman rather milling a mana crypt and a hex drinker to later Luris, like plus a land. That's just, that was like the perfect Witherbloom command. All right, all right. Let's see. Spent three minutes with Mystical Tutor on the stack. This must be a, a tough lesson. <laughs> I'm glad I tapped the top before uh, playing the Prismari command. I was like, you know, I think I'm going to draw a land, but let's not, let's not take the risk. What we're hoping comes from this turn... I guess I guess one of the things that Troll said it could get is like a mind twist from the catacombs. Glad I didn't discard the battle ball. Okay, I guess I am gonna have my turn without with both these permanents in play because he's gonna from the catacombs get a basic and then get to replay mana crypt as well and pump the hex drinker twice. Okay, but it can't attack with it. Interesting. All right. Let's draw for turn. Remand is pretty good. Let's use the one ring here. So there's the Tinker that has nothing to get. Hmm. <laughs> um, I could top, because if I top and find uh, Brainstorm, it's really good. How much mana do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What are you going to do next turn? I don't... You know what? I think I'm just going to play a third path iconoclast and pass the turn because now i have cryptic and remand up which 
makes me feel pretty safe about this. You can take another turn with the initiative, but cryptic means I can kind of steal back the initiative fairly easily. And you might ask, how do I have cryptic plus for manned up? Well, the answer is that uh, when I cast the first one, I'll get a token off the Iconoclast, which gives me the mana to cast the second one. It doesn't mean that I, Mac, Matt, I, I'm confused because I have Mac on my team and I'm playing against Matt. Um, it doesn't mean that Matt can't go in between those because there is going to be the third path trigger on the stack. Uh, losing the mana crypt flip would have been nice. But let's see what happens here. Pumping Hex Drinker, sure. I think that that's fine. I'm just going to I'm gonna want to use Portal. Haywire Might's fine. You can exile the One Ring, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's okay. I feel like I have the cards I need to, to win this game. And Luris, and now, hmm, I guess I don't really like having it around twice, but I don't know. I could counter it and tap your team. And this is, it's a finality counter on it. Is that what that, that, that does? No, if it would leave the battlefield. Exile instead of, oh, so I actually should have done this the first time. No, that was my mistake. But let's go. Counter target spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand. Let's go do this. Please let this trigger resolve. Yes, now I have remand up. That's countered. And then that's Luris is exiled. So yeah, I should have just done that the first time, actually. I didn't. Didn't, you know, the, the, didn't really get there in time, but I think we're still in pretty great shape here because now I have enough mana to just cast Portal at some point if I want. And I could also do some remanding. Okay, are we just going to Hex Drinker it up here? You can't give it pro everything. Not yet. Oh, I guess you could have it by playing a land. All right. And then you're going to pass. I'm going to spin top. Lelia and two lands. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess I'll just draw the Lelia. That's fine. Land and portal to Frexia. One, two. Actually, do I want to go into the. I don't think I. Yeah, I don't think I need to keep the creatures untapped. So if I cast portal. Yeah, that's going to be good because I'm going to get a token. I have the spell pierce, so and Ely has the days. And then it's going to eat the hex drinker. And then now I'm going to have enough mana to remand, which is pretty nice. And I'm going to go ahead and take the initiative back. So, oh, we're, we're condemning the Urza. I didn't foresee condemn. I guess that makes sense. Um... Yeah, I think that's fine. I, I don't really think I want to uh, remand that because it's not really going to do much. And I'd rather just shuffle because I know my top two cards are both bricks. But I should have attacked with just the third path Iconoclast, I guess. Maybe, but what if he had a different kind of removal? I guess he would have maybe used it earlier. I don't know. He's got one card in hand. He can cast uh, from the Catacombs again, getting back Haywire Might to kill my portal. <laughs> I feel like I'm still doing all right here, but do I want to upkeep top? Maybe. Okay, so from the catacombs, from the catacombs, it's a haywire mite. I mean, I guess it could be a hex drinker, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think it's going to be a haywire mite. And you get to go into the stash and make a treasure. And then you get to haywire my, the portal, and the portal's gone. But I'm going to get to take back the initiative. You have two cards in hand, four mana. And passing the turn? No. Casting Intrepid Adversary as a 4-2. Sure. Uh, let's, let's spin the top. I think that that's worth it. Oh, show and tell? Nice. So let's go Island... 
uh, island show and tell, draw, play Lelia, attack with all my creatures, um, and exile an island. Yeah, that seems fine to me. Because I'm gonna have a bunch of blockers left. If you wanna, if you can eat a, if you wanna eat a soldier token and leave me with creatures, then that's fine. Can't cast from the catacombs this turn, which is nice. Don't have enough cards in the graveyard. Take the initiative, and let's go. I know my top cards are islands. Do I want to forge? Yeah, let's just go forge and put a counter on the soldier token and then go land and show and tell get another token put a battle ball into play and now matt can take the initiative back with uh the the creeping tar pit i don't think that's going to do it here okay you got one card you get to, you get a 4-1 skeleton when you hit me but it seems like it's going to be pretty tough. I never ended up using the remand, funnily enough. And... Yep, there goes the tar pit. Oh, I guess it's actually a four-point hit with the tar pit. And you take the initiative, sure. You go to 19. Not really very close to, to escaping this one more time, I don't think. Pretty nice little Luris deck, though. Though a lot of these cards are, are kind I mean, I have cards that are easy to play around once you know about them, but the, so, so does Matt here. Oh, Lingering Souls. Interesting. All right, that was a pretty good draw. You do four creatures. I mean, I can still take the initiative back, but let's see what I want to do. Cool. Uh, <laughs> let's draw. I think I'll upkeep draw so that I can... Uh, get another token off the third path here. And now I have to decide, what do I do? The oh, Lingering Souls was actually pretty annoying because I can attack with the Battle Ball that puts you to four directly, Then you, but then this, this Intrepid Adversary is pretty big. Let's look with the top, because if I find Mystic Confluence, it's pretty nice here. Um, I have a little bit of mana here. I can top. Tap top to draw, play top, spin it. I know what my top three cards are. I guess I could attack with Lelia first. And next turn he's going to get to use Throne of the Dead 3, which doesn't necessarily get me, but it's not ideal. Hmm. I have 13 cards left. Urza would also pop off pretty hard. I kind of want to just attack with Lelia. And let's see if Battle Ball gets blocked by Skeleton in a, in a Spirit Token. I could also attack with, like, I'm at Forge, you're at Trap. What if I attack with everything? You gain, you're basically at 12, and then you block six things. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you go to eight, and then you go to three off Trap, and I'm a 50-50 to win the game. Interesting. And then you have to block this, 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 so at I guess the, the Intrepid Adversary blocks one of the 1-1s. One and then I'm at 19. I can't really be attacked back for the win, but you can you can do these things. All right, I think I should probably use this top then. Because I want to get I want to get uh, extra tokens off of the third path iconoclast. I think that's worth it. And now I think I should spin the top. I guess actually what I'm going to do is I don't really care about getting an extra land off Lelia. I think I'm going to go like this, attack with everything, and then uh, I'm not going to pump this. Lelia exiles the land, and then I'm going to spin the top, because if I find Mystic Confluence, I just win. Well, didn't find Mystic Confluence, but Urza is a, is a pretty nice one too. Because Urza means I can have... Uh, remand up on my next turn. And I'm just straight up 50-50 to win right now. Yep, Intrepid Adversary blocks token, Skeleton blocks Lelia, Spirit token blocks third path, Spirit token blocks 1-1, one, one. Spirit token blocks 3-3, three, three. Spirit token blocks 1-1. One, one. 
Oh, you have to block the battle ball too, of course. Um, okay. I guess if you want an extra spirit token to survive, you can block that way. That's fine too. All right. Intrepid Adversary is actually kind of housing me here. All right, I take the initiative. I trap you. Boom, down two. And then I draw. And guess who's back? It's Urza. And now I have Remand up, so I'm not going to spin the top. All right. Mana Crypt? You won the flip. Okay. Still a pretty tough battle here, I think. You can animate Tar Pit. That puts me to 13. The two spirits put me to 9. And then you get to use Throne of the Dead 3, but... I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine creatures here. And you're at two. Really at six if you want to throw away the adversary, but then the construct gets to block it. So, yeah, we'll see. Lingering Souls is a ridiculously good draw, but I think we could still actually beat it. This has been a wild game. All right, here comes the tar pit. I guess maybe you attack with just the tar pit. The thing is... The Lurus deck can't play that great of a creature. It has to cost two mana. Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Uh, this comes in, I take it. You get the initiative. And what do you got? <laughs> Hydroid Crisis. <laughs> He has Echo of Eons, too. Okay, so that's good to know. But it, you get a Hydroid Crisis, which is a 4-4 four, four Hexproof, because it has three counters off Throne in the Intrepid Adversary. That's really funny. Oh, and then you drew something big. What is this? Let's see, a Walking Ballista. Wow, that was a good draw. I did have the Remand, luckily. Okay. And then the remand should should close out the game. You go to six, you block four things. One, two, three, four. Wow, I don't actually have lethal, funnily enough. Um, huh. I mean, it's going to be pretty hard for me not to find Mystic Confluence, given that I have Sensei's top and a bunch of ways to shuffle and a million mana. But it is funny that I don't actually quite have lethal. All right, I don't have an upkeep... Stop, let's go Sensei's top. And if I find Mystic Confluence, I don't even really need that many attackers. Dak Faden, does that do it? I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't really do much for me. So what I think I'm going to do is, let's see. Let's just count my attackers. I only have one mirror, so I can only hit for one. So if I battle ball, poke you with the mirror, you go to one. There's a construct. I guess I could, I guess what I think I'll do is tinker away the talisman. Oh, I hit Mystic Forge. I, I, you know what? I forgot I had Mystic Forge in my deck. Okay, this, this is just going to be easy then. Top, play top. All right, draw Mystic Confluence. Land, Mystic Confluence. Let's get all this junk out of the way. Uh, return target creature, boing, 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 One, two, three, four, and five. And then that is game. Okay, send with everything. And whew, what a game. All right, well, we got to see basically all of each other's decks, so there is that. Okay, well, Luris Companion, huh? Oof. All right, that was game one. Um, don't really like Brazen Borrower or Treachery. Well, Treachery against Luris is pretty good. Hmm. And he's going to have a Luris every game. So I don't really like Brazen Borrower. I don't really want Welder against all that removal. I wonder, do I want like Mind Slaver or Mightstone, Weakstone, any of those things? I think Spell Pierce is going to be good. He's got from the Catacombs... Obviously, like for Toxic Deluge, that game was pretty sick. It's not always going to work out that nicely, but 
Show and tell's great against a Luris deck. <laughs> Nothing to put into play. Mm. So I do kind of want to get this treachery in. Don't think I want to take the spell pierce out. I don't think I want to take the probe out or DAC. The third path iconoclast seems good. Witherbloom command is pretty annoying. It's going to be good against me. I think it's not aggressive enough that I think Bolus of Citadel could be good. Haywire Might's really annoying. <laughs> that that card I don't really have a, a great answer to or anything. Mm, I could cut Mystic Forge just because this is a two-card combo and he can kill the Mystic Forge in a bunch of ways, but it's pretty strong when it works. I could go to 15 land on the draw. That seems... That seems kind of foolish, though. Maybe I don't. Maybe I just don't run the treachery. There's not that many things I'd want to treachery. I guess treachering a hex drinker can be kind of nice, though. You can't level it up all the way. All right. Uh, I guess I'll I'll leave it as is. I don't know. This this deck. I found it very hard to make the last couple cuts in this deck. I just have a very uh, very well rounded deck here. All right. This hand is totally fine. Get to go turn one hard evidence, turn two crack the clue, turn three DAC, maybe maybe steal a mana crypt, who knows? Oh, a talisman. Alright, well that'll be my turn two play, because that'll open up a turn three one ring. Assuming I don't get Witherbloom commanded right out the door. Ooh, we've drawn some pretty nice straws here. Talisman at the top means I just have dumped a lot of stuff into play. Obviously it would have been nice if I ever got Academy, but even Urza would be sick here. And probably just slamming the one ring next turn. Obviously, if he plays an artifact, I, I re reserve the right to Dac Fade in it. But let's see. Lingering Souls. Okay. That is acceptable. The one ring. And we'll draw a card and pass the turn here. Can't get attacked. And then... Next turn, maybe Dak plus Third Path Iconoclast or something along those lines. Okay, here comes Lingering Souls once again. Into a tap land, sure. Draw. Just draw for turn here. Draw two more. Oh, there it is. Okay. What to do, what to do. I guess... I kind of want to start with Urza. Oh, Stern scolding the Urza. Poof, that's a beating. All right, I didn't see that one, I don't think. Did I see that one? I, I didn't I didn't pay a ton of attention to the screenshot. Oh, I did see the Stern scolding. I don't know that I wouldn't have cast Urza, but that was a beating. All right. So now the Spirit Tokens are going to do some pretty good damage. This deck doesn't have... I don't have a great answer to the Lingering Souls tokens, honestly. Oh, is he going to put Urza back into play on his side? Okay. That's kind of interesting. I guess I can't bounce it because it gets exiled. I wonder if treachery, because of this kind of incidence, is, is, worth, is worth considering. I don't know. I can Dak Fade in the token if I want. Let's see how much we get attacked for the full four. Sure. All right. Let's look. Bulls is Citadel, I don't, definitely don't want. I guess I'll draw the Mystic Confluence, though it kind of doesn't matter. It's a little fake because I'm going to draw potentially draw it all with the One Ring. Um, I have six mana. <laughs> I could show and tell the Citadel into play with top. And then, yeah, that actually goes pretty deep. All right. And then I have Cryptic. Oh, I kind of didn't want to draw the Cryptic because now if I show and tell the Citadel into play, this isn't an artifact by any chance, right? <laughs> now seeing if I could steal it. Uh, 13, really at 10. Don't think, I don't think my path to victory involves Bulls as Citadel. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. I have a lot of good options here. 
turn scolding, huh? Um, I've already played my land. I have six mana total. I could go Iconoclast plus Dax, steal the Construct token. That sounds pretty reasonable. I could also Mystic Confluence, kill the Urza, and kill two Spirits, and do nothing else. I don't like that as much. Let's just do this. There's a pretty good chance I'll be able to set up a Tinker here soon as well. Play this, get a... Because the other thing is stealing the token, like the token is really big. So, steal that. Okay. And pass the turn here. And then I'm also threatening to next turn try to take the initiative back. I guess we're just going to go forge, attack me for six down to seven, and then I'm going to one ring. So, yeah, I'm not loving this. What I might end up doing... Hmm. Oh, no. I guess I don't have quite enough mana to, to get back the ring and play it. No. Yeah, I... I guess with that Screeping Tar Pit too, I'm pretty screwed here. Lingering Souls plus Stern Scolding was basically all that happened this game, and that was enough to beat a pretty good draw on my part. It's very unfortunate. How do I get out of this? I guess I get, I guess I, I take the initiative, but then that Creeping Tar Pit is really a problem. Does Show and Tell do something for me? I don't know. I have a lot of broken stuff I can do, but it's just like... What I'm fighting against is like very difficult. It's like all these individual spirits, this unblockable tar pit, this like the initiative, you know, this it's all it's all kind of rough. Okay, just attacking me, that's totally fine. I'm at seven, going to four. I don't really have life gain. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna die this game. That Stern Scolding got me pretty good. I mean, it's not that like I, I don't know what I should have played otherwise. Like I guess I could have cast Show and Tell to put the Urza into play. That didn't seem like a very good play. I was just gonna go Urza Show and Tell in the Battle Ball, and that would have been great. Ooh, is this a toxic deluge of some kind? That's interesting. I wonder what I wonder what that what possibilities that opens up. Oh, I do have one here. No, no, no. I was saying I could bounce the one ring. Uh, sure. I could bounce the one ring and then show intelligent to play, but then I wouldn't have protection. So that doesn't work. I guess... Oh, animate did the iconoclast? Sure. Hmm. Animate dead's another good one. All right, let's spin the top. The problem is this deck has no way to generate extra mana. Besides Urza, which is already gone and gone. All right, I go to four. I mean, I guess I'll draw with the one ring. Oh, S Lelia. Unfortunately, mm, unfortunately, that doesn't quite work. I can take the initiative back, but the third path Iconoclast is going to block, and then the tar pit kills me. I guess the problem is I could go bounce tar pit, tap third path, play Lelia, attack, then the third path attacks back, and that doesn't work. Right, let's let's draw. Uh, I think we're just dead here. Yeah, that was too much too much stuff. Okay. Um, playing as lingering souls doesn't make me want treachery very much. Do I want like Mind Slaver? Mind Slaver to, if I Mind Slaver and catch uh, Toxic Deluge, that's just a win. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just put in a cheeky Mind Slaver over the Battle Ball. I kind of don't hate that. And do I want Treachery or anything, a Brazen Bar or anything like that? Might Stone Weak Stone? No, I think, I think I like that. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see if this works out. All right. All right, I am on the play. The thing is, I couldn't have asked for a much better hand than that. I will keep this hand. This hand needs a little bit of help, but I I'm just going to play my Tarn, and I'm going to brainstorm into a second land, so then I go Talisman top, and then I attack with uh, Lely on turn three, and that's pretty good. Hope I don't get 
Oh, I'm gonna spell pierce that. That's nice. We will we will always do that. All right, island. Spell pierce mana crypt. No thanks. I will pass. Okay, no plays. Land, 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 land. Yes. Because now we go talisman into top. Oh, this has turned out to be an exceedingly efficient turn. I could even subtlety a creature play. Oh, you got stuck on lands? Nice. You love to see it. You honestly do. <laughs> I'm going to play Lelia and attack here. Or see if I go to attacks. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to do this, and I'm going to, in response, draw. Uh, it would have worked out. It would have worked out better to just let it resolve, but this guarantees me an extra card, which seemed like a, a pretty good deal because I already had a land in hand to play. Spell piercing the mana crypt. Oh, this just feels like an extremely earned victory. I'm not saying it actually is, but it feels like it. Um. Yeah, I mean, let's ponder. Let's see. There, there. Shuffle, no. Land. Attack with Lelia, exile the one ring and cast it. And then, I mean, this game is just extremely over. This was an all in on Mana Crypt hand and, and I had the spell pierce. I guess if you draw a land this turn, you could Lingering Souls, but yeah, this isn't this isn't gonna happen here. Spell pierce claims another victim. Oh yeah, you love to see it. All right, 1-0 after a pretty awesome match and uh, let's get to round two. Alrighty, time for round two, playing against Luca here, and I'm going to keep this hand on the draw. I don't actually know what Luca's playing, because he hasn't played his round one yet. I'm his round one, but that that's fine. Um, okay, we drew the land. Now I think I just cast Ponder, because I want to cast Third Path on turn two. Yeah, this looks good. Let's do it like this. And then I want to cast Show and Tell on turn three and, and put Bull of Citadel into play if I can, if I don't get a Hymned or something. Okay, I'm going to cast the, the third path. And it's a bit of a red herring. Like, I don't mind if, uh, if this gets killed. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I guess I'm going to draw the Cryptic. It's not going to be quite so free. Oh, no. Faithless looting. This could get scary. Though, now that I know Luca's in red, on red-black, it makes me a little more scared to reanimate. Oh, okay, this actually is going to work out okay, because Titan of Industry is coming down, makes a 4-4, but it means it's not, it's no longer in his hand, so now, presumably, it's, that's the biggest creature in his hand. So, let's go Citadel, don't hit land, don't hit land, don't hit land, please don't hit land. Okay, Scrapwork Mutt, let's cast Hard Evidence, oh, and there's Sensei's top! <laughs> and now I get to draw, play top. I get to make infinite idiots. I mean, not literal infinite, but it's bounded by my life total. But yeah, look at that. A thing of beauty. It really is. Uh, and Luca, Luca had enough. Didn't need to see any more. Look at that. Smooth. Mm. Playing against Reanimator, I probably should put Treachery and Brazen Borrower in my deck. I do want Spell Pierce for sure. I kind of want to take the Battle Ball out if I'm putting in more expensive spells. I think Subtlety is still probably good. Show and Tell. So if I Show and Tell and he puts something that kills Citadel into play, it's pretty bad. Portals also. Maybe I just take the Show and Tell out. It feels pretty bad to play it against a Reanimator deck. Maybe I'll just do this, and then if it turns out that Show and Tell is actually good against him, maybe. But like that Titan of Industry would have killed my Citadel or Portal if I had done that, and that just doesn't line up well. Uh, yeah, this hand's fine. I do need to draw red, but I have turn one hard evidence, turn two brazen bar plus crack clue into Lelia on three if I get there, and Luca Mulligan to six here. All right, the One Ring isn't really what I'm looking for here. It's not like it's terrible, but really what I just want to find is Basic Mountain. I'm totally fine if I get that. I mean, I do get extra draws here. 
thanks to the clue token. Okay, so we drew looting and discard two swamps. Ooh, that's a good sign. We're not discarding some giant thing. Citadel is a pretty bad draw, given that I have <laughs> no show and tell in my deck anymore. Uh, Mox, okay. And what do we got? Grief or something? Oh, Minsk and Boo. All right, so this is where if I had a third land, it would be really nice because I would get to bounce Boo and uh, just play Lely and attack, but I did not. I'll take four, I guess. Draw, okay, Cryptic is okay. Well, no longer think I'm in good shape here. I guess maybe I can bounce the, the boo this turn. Oh, we're vamping too. Okay. We might be going to game three here. The, the development of turn three Minsk and Boo and me not finding a red source or another land has made things a little tougher. I guess I'll block here, sure. Okay. And then he's going to minus two. Okay, that actually works kind of nicely. Because now I get to to bounce Boo, and the minus two doesn't do anything. All right, and what's your last card? Is it a mind twist? All right, just keep Lelia. All I need to ask, if I keep Lelia and I draw a mountain, I can actually win this game. Nope, I did not keep Lelia. Okay. Island, I guess I just play this and pass. And... Oh man, I discarded the one ring too. At least I would discard a bolus of citadel. That one's not so great. Mm, honestly, I'm kind of winning right now. I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm crushing, but if Luca missed on this turn, I get to go end of turn Brazen Borrower, and that does kill the Minskin Boo, and then I have Cryptic Command up. Oh, and Urza now. Attack Minskin Boo. All right. And. I think I just pass. Let's see. If you cast a spell, I guess I'll just cryptic. No, I'm just gonna take it. I'll go to seven. I I don't I'm not that scared against red black. My teammates have a lot of burn as well. Yeah, this is gonna work a lot better. Counter target spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand counter, bounce that. And then I get to slam Urza. And Things can, oh, and I drew top. Look at that, now I get to go Urza. I actually have the infinite combo in my in my hand. Uh, Urza into top, hit for three. Next turn, if I Mystic Forge and then play third path, with third path, Mystic Forge and top out, I tap top to draw a card. <clears throat> I replay the top off the top. It makes a token, which then pays for the top again. And I get to make, basically draw my whole deck and make that many tokens. Pretty strong combo. Okay, I guess Urza's, Urza's dying, so we're not getting to do it all, but this is still, I think, pretty good. Let's draw, let's go Mystic Forge, draw, land, play top. I'm at seven and you're at 11. Just attack you for six, I guess. And Hope to uh, not lose this turn, because next turn I'll win pretty easily. Voldar and Epicure. Okay. Let's be to six, and then you can attack me to four. I guess it also lets you discard Dark Ritual. That's not a big creature, so I'm not going to get reanimated out of here. I mean, this, this game is just over. And well, that's a clean little 2-0 start. You do love to see it. All right, we are cruising. Our team is up 5-1, and I'm a nice little 2-0. Mac is 2-0, Sandy's 0-1, Ely is 1-0. I would like to play first, playing against Theo here. Ooh, I'll keep this hand. Uh, do I lead with a probe? Yeah, I think I do. And I've got a bunch of one drops, so what do we got? Oh, yikes. I needed a spell pierce bad here. Because he's going to go Swamp, Mox, Pearl, Talisman. Though, I guess he has a black green talisman, yeah. Okay, so he can play it. He can play Grist on turn two, which is actually going to be pretty annoying. Let's play my own Tally. 
pass. I guess if I if Theo didn't draw a land here, he yeah, I mean I'm not surprised. He wouldn't be able to play the talisman first, but pretty reasonable. Oh, that's a different talisman. He's actually gonna get to metamorphose out of Teferi here at some point. Um Oh, I guess I kept my option to cryptic open by playing a land this way, but actually I'm gonna take an extra damage because I'm gonna do this. And then I'm going to attack uh, Grist here and force a block. I uh, hit an island. Sure, I'll play it. And play my island and ship the turn. And now I guess what he can do is he can go Manamorphose, Teferi, make a token, and then minus two Grist. But... Uh, I needed to find Spell Pierce. Spell Pierce would have made this game a lot easier. This is, this is going to be a little tough. Metamorphose is gone. I mean, yeah, this is all going to be gone momentarily here. So he hasn't drawn a land. Otherwise, he go land, talisman, all that. Oh, he has drawn a land. So he's going to play a talisman first, I assume. Oh, no, maybe he wants to keep blue up for some reason. All right. Yeah, make a 2-2 two, two, and then minus 2 it, I guess. Yeah... I don't have uh, any moves there, as they say. Oh, into Preordain? Up the Teferi? Yeah, that Grist is going to really make it hard to get any traction going with my uh, good creatures this game, of which I have a couple. I guess I'm just going to play Urza, because now if he wants to kill Urza, he has to lose the tokens off Grist he has to lose Grist, first of all, and minus two to Fairy. Assuming he doesn't have a play in hand, obviously. Yeah, I think that's the best I can do. I mean, I'm not feeling good about this, I'll tell you that much. Okay. You have the initiative. But also, from my opening hand, I think I've drawn an Urza and four lands or something. So, that doesn't help either. Grist, make a 1 1. Fairy make a hound dog. Land and no other plays, huh? Let's draw some action. <laughs> action in short supply here. Okay. I could bounce the spirit token and make some attacks. I don't think I want to do that. I think I'm just going to play my land. I kind of want to just spin Urza. Yeah. If I hit Portal or Tinker, it's really good. Or Bulls of Citadel. I guess I shouldn't have even played my land first. Hit Remand. All right. We, we can give this one up. This this one, we're about to lose all our permanents and all our cards. So, effectively. Uh, didn't think Treachery was good. There's a bunch of Planeswalkers. Pestermite's good against Planeswalkers, and if you side in Pestermite, you obviously want to bring in Kiki Jiki as well. That's like a possibility. I think the Spell Pierce looks amazing here. So does Dak and Prismari Command. Subtlety, yeah, no, I, my deck's like fantastic in this matchup, so let's just not get unlucky. Maybe Mindslaver, Mindslaver with all those Planeswalkers. Not that that's like the best against those. He does have a Lee of Old and a fourth Theorlingus, just lots of colors, basically. All right, I'll well, keep this hand. And hopefully we don't get Land Mox Talisman, because without the Mox, let's, let's say the Mox was just a bit another land, like a duel or whatever, then Theo would not have been able to, to get Grist online nearly to the same degree. I would have had two creatures in play when he played the Teferi. Like, it would have just been a very different game. Okay, no Mox this time. That, that one's nice. Oh, Let's play Talisman. I was thinking about playing the Iconoclast, but drawing Subtlety made me change my mind because now I can go Lelia and Subtlety a Planeswalker or a creature. And when you have Lelia going, I don't need the Iconoclast going that badly. So he's going to get one of his Tri-Lands here. And hopefully just another tap land. No? All right, well. Hmm. Lelia or the One Ring? Lelia or the One Ring? I don't really know which counters he's got. Let's play the One Ring, I think. We'll see. I mean, if, if it gets... Oh, Force of Negation pitching Narset. All right, that's fine. I don't honestly mind that too too much. 
obviously Lelia would have worked out a little better against, you know, uh, a force of negation specifically, but pest infestation, my signature. That also doesn't really bother me. All right, let's go Lelia. Hit a cantrip. Just nice little ponders, all I ask. Eh, Scalding Tarn's okay. Let's play the turn. Pass the turn. I mean, and now if like a Grist comes down, I can counter it. Lotus Petal. Oh, are we going to Lotus Petal out like a Teferi or something? That'd be sick. Grist, yeah. I'm going to subtlety that. It's, it doesn't solve my problem forever, but it gives me the time to to find Mystic Confluence, Cryptic Command, uh, Remand. Any of those things would be awesome. I assume he's got to put it. I put it on top. Yeah, I put it on top, of course. Okay, I'm going to take one. I'm not going to crack my fetch. Should have cracked my fetch. All right, come on, Lelia. Lelia's going to die next turn. This really has to hit some action here. <laughs> All right, sure. Uh, I guess I'm going to crack the fiery eyelet here. And see if I can draw something. Well, that's pretty bad, but okay. Pass. Any interaction spell would be so sick here if he minuses the Grist, which is probably what he's going to do. Huh. My Tillerian Academy died for this. A oh, Woe Strider. Sure, and then you're going to play Grist as your last card. All right. Well, I'm pretty flooded here, but I will say that if I draw... I'm in 19 still. I'm not taking that much damage. I have a lot of looks at Sensei's top, and honestly, Mystic Forge gets you a lot of looks even if you're not casting stuff off it. I do like Brainstorm. Let's actually just start with that now that I have a fetch land ready to go. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll put back two lands. I mean, I could just cast Battle Bolt next turn if I just skip out on playing Mystic Forge. It's probably worth it, I would say. He's got no cards in hand. Okay, pass the turn. Going to get hit down to 14. I'm going to fetch down to 13. We drew a talisman or something. Fertile ground, sure. Adds every color, so it gets white mana, so it's better, but kind of worse because it doesn't fuel Academy. The Academy that looks pretty bad this game. I mean, I, I guess Theo's got a bunch of uh, talismans and whatnot. All right. Grist can now kill the Battle Sphere, but I'm left with, left with a bunch of tokens, and this gives me... Oh. There's no cards in hand. Let's go Mystic Forge first. Exile the top card. Probe. All right, and then just go show and tell. I think using show and tell as like a seething song to get the Mystic Forge out is pretty nice here. I can almost cast everything. I guess Bolus's Citadel is the one that I, I don't like, but everything else works pretty nicely. Is he going to sack a pest to scry with Rose Strider? It's probably decent to do that, but I don't know. It's close. He doesn't draw anything. He's got a Grist, the Battle Ball, and then the Woe Strider. I guess I don't really want to kill it. Oh, actually, he's going to Grist, sacking the Woe Strider, and then escaping it. Hmm. No, he didn't go for it. Didn't go for the full value play. That's okay. All right, Battle Ball down. No, I'm not going to block the Woe Strider with two Mirror Tokens. I think I'm just going to chump. No reason to let that thing come back, and I don't have a strong reason not to block there. I mean, obviously, if I draw Urza at some point... Ooh, what is this? Leovold? Oh, Chrome House Seam Shark. Okay. That will become a problem. It is not one yet. Okay, let's exile my top card. Okay, probe, draw the island. Just because if I hit top a turn early or any other artifact, it would be pretty nice. Mystic Confluence. Well, that's at least a good one. Okay. I'm at 11, and I'm going to take 2 damage this turn, putting me to 9. Don't draw anything good. I'm going to attack with the Insect. I guess I'll block the Insect, because over time it does just as much damage. All right, I'm at 9. Did we miss for a turn? We did. All right, draw Dak Faden. Hmm. I kind of just want to draw 3 cards here. 
And I'm not going to mill the Dark Vaden off the top, I don't think. All right. There's Tinker. I'm at nine. Yeah, I guess I could Tinker for Bolas' Citadel, or I could just Tinker for top. I could also play Dark Vaden. Let's see. One, two, three, four. I mean, I'm very close to just casting Portal to Phyrexia. Drawing Portal and Tinker in the same thing was, uh, <laughs> and my Brainstorm's gone too. Let's just go Dak Faden and then Loot and discard. Let's see, I'm drawing a Mountain next turn, so, if I, so I will be able to cast the Portal. I guess I'll discard Tinker and Hard Evidence past the turn I've got I do die to fourth year lingus but that's kind of been true I'm gonna chump the woe strider and then Dak Faden maybe takes two or maybe I take two and then next turn I get to slam portal to Frexy and kind of hope that works it, it even kills the seed shark through one spell because one incubate token is not enough to save the seed shark talisman sure that is more than acceptable. All right, um, land, portal, and I think I actually steal the incubator token as well with DAC, because even if it gets transformed, uh, you could have sacked the shark to scry one. Even if it gets transformed, I still get to keep it. All right, so you don't want to transform it for me. All right, you got one turn to draw fourth year lingus, which actually I don't even think is lethal anymore. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, no, it's still this. Uh, or, no, don't do it, don't do it. Or a way to get rid of the portal. Oh, we're bringing back Woe Strider. That is acceptable. I guess you get to exile your own seed shark too. I, but I get to bring back a battle ball, so. I think that's going to be good enough. Okay. I will go to eight and mill my top card here. And upkeep. I'm looking for cryptic command as my last card that really matters. Let's get mirror battlesphere back in back in business. Let's go to seven. Let's mill this island. Let's draw pulses this a little nice. Okay, I'm actually kind of close to getting to cast Bolas of Citadel, which is funny. Um, target player draws two cards, destroy target artifact. I'll draw two and I'll destroy the Talisman. This is like destroying two mana with the Academy in play. And then I've got a Bolas of Citadel that I'm going to discard. I'll probably discard, uh, I'll just discard Ponder and Bolas of Citadel. And then play top. Okay, now now we're we're rolling. Play top. I'm just looking for. Uh, okay, crypt. I just tapped tap my mana terribly. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, spell pierce should probably be enough, right? <laughs> I mean, the biggest thing I'm afraid of is fourth year lingus, which actually at this point doesn't even do that much. Um. So yeah, that was that was foolish. Sure, we'll draw cryptic command here. And then Portal is going to bring back Subtlety. I don't really want to bring back Lelia because I actually don't want to exile the top card. I'm not actually going to run out of cards here, I swear. <laughs> uh, but let's just make sure. Oh, there's Urza. All right. I mean, Urza should lock this thing down. Okay, now I have Cryptic up. It's free to play the top, so I will. I mean, I guess it's not free and it puts me to three cards in deck, but I don't think that's a big issue. Because I have lethal next turn. I really don't see how you're going to beat a cryptic here. And you're going to chump the battle ball. And we are going to game three. Boom. We'll see, we'll see. All right, all right. And yeah, I mean, 
I think I have a pretty good matchup. Like, obviously, if he starts with the Mox and a Talisman, he can get out ahead of me. This deck's biggest weakness is that it's slow, though Subtlety did some good work there. But Spell Pierce is just fantastic against him. So is Prismari Command and DAC. So if I can leverage those, I guess I'll be pretty happy. I don't think I want Mind Slaver. All right, I think I think I like where we're at. Maybe I could put in Treachery for Leovold, but I don't think that that is particularly great. Okay, I'm going to keep this hand and... I'm, did, no mocks, please? Okay, preordain's fine. Do I play turn one hard evidence is kind of the question. Because obviously not using my mana on turn one is awkward, but it could be, no, I'm, I, I think I'm, I don't think, I think if third path iconoclast lives, I'm not going to worry about having extra spell to play for this. Okay, talisman. Oh, I wish it was for talisman because I have the DAC ready to go. All right, I'm going to need Dak to loot me out of this because so far we're a little bit heavy on Zemana. All right, please lead with a Talisman. Skull Clamp? That is actually really good for me right now. Huh. Okay. I, I like it. So let's go land, Dak, and then make a token off Third Path Iconoclast and then steal the Skull Clamp that you are planning on doing good things with, with the Grist. Past the turn, I am going to lose my third path Iconoclast, but <laughs> I can actually kill the Grist, potentially. <laughs> Equip Skull Clamp to the Crab, attack with Crab and Soldier. <laughs> I mean, it looks like uh, Theo's going to make a bigger play this turn, so that's probably not going to happen, but it is funny. No, okay, I thought this was Pest Infestation. I was scared. Mm, yeah... I mean, I'm really not that worried about this. You're going to kill Third Path Iconoclast, I guess. But I still have Skull Clamp deck. I get to see a lot of cards now. All right. Brainstorm, huh? Um, I have some cards I don't mind discarding, so I guess I don't mind starting with Dak Fade in plus on myself. I could also equip the Soldier Token first. But that doesn't seem great. Let's Let's do this. Tinker, huh? Okay, so let's discard Mountain. Do I discard the Battle Ball is kind of the question. I'm going to get greedy. I'm going to discard two lands. Because what I'm going to do here is go land. Tinker sacking the Clue token. Oh, actually I shouldn't have played the land. I, I, I again changed my mind. I'm going to get the Citadel. Oh, into the portal, sure. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll pay the nine right there. <laughs> play the talisman. And then now I, I've got talisman to equip skull clamp on the crab <laughs> and get that grist. I think I get the grist. Actually, hold on. I don't care about the grist. I'm going to get the Teferi. I'll, I'll leave a grist in play. All right. And then I'll pass. And the cool thing is I have brainstorm plus bolus citadel here. So. I get to brainstorm back Mystic Confluence if, if I so desire. Okay, no plays. I'm just going to hold brainstorm in hand. Yeah, you're probably not winning against me untapping with these cards in, in hand. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. All right. Portal. I'm at nine. Sure, I'll play Lelia. I'll go to six, I guess. Play my island. And let's go to attacks. Grist, Grist, Grist. Layla Exiles, Fiery Islet. Oh, and I have Subtlety on top now, too. Okay, I assume you chump Lelia here. Oh, you're just going to let this all hit. All right, and then I guess I will deck. I'll deck myself still. Discard Mountain Island. I, 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 now I, I'm totally fine with discarding lands. I, I don't think I'm that likely to miss a land drop in the near future. And now I have multiple counters up. I don't have like lethal in play or anything, but I do. I can do a lot of damage. Ooh, what is this? Vendillion Click. All right, let's cast Subtlety. 
put it on top. Okay. Certainly don't want to get hit by Vendillion click. Or maybe top. Let's see. It might be bottom now. Yeah, bottom now. And I just need to take no more damage off Citadel because I would be able to brainstorm Mystic Confluence, go to one life, and ooh, clean 3-0. Honestly, this deck I think was very good. Even one mox would have really given it this like explosive potential that it was missing, but Spell Pierce went a long way. Really glad I took Spell Pierce over Volcanic there. Confluence, Subtlety, Cryptic, like some good control cards, Remand. And then the Tinker was actually great. Citadel really performed. That card usually doesn't, but it was good this game. And uh, yeah, this deck was pretty fun. We, we crushed them in the draft. I got to 3-0. This was with Alpha Frog's Cube, so uh, it's not Sam's Cube where you, you change a card when you 3-0. Uh, with Frog's Cube, uh, if you 3 you can suggest a card, but it, you could do that anyway. <laughs> so in any case, really happy with uh, how this deck played out. I was uh, glad to see all the things kind of work. I got to do all the things I wanted to do, which was pretty cool. And uh, a nice blue-red kind of fair artifact deck. No broken mana besides just the Urza, but Urza is pretty good. Thanks for watching, everyone. I appreciate that you uh, watched me draft Urza for the first time. I had never seen this card before. But uh, no, this is a fun deck to play. And uh, I will be back tomorrow with another draft. Maybe not a 3-0, but you can always hope. Thanks for watching.